Thank you. Yeah, we are good. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I'm okay. good. So, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is fine. You can comment how are you in the chat box as well. And uh, uh, to introduce this webinar to all of our uh, members who are here to attend the webinar. So we are trying to bring professionals close to Aritic platform with this Aritic live webinar. It is an online talk show organized for marketing, sales, business development, product leaders and working professionals. So the talk show includes webinar, webcast, the secret of successful data-driven marketing. So we all know that data has value and businesses must recognize this. Moreover, running a business requires using a large amount of data amplifying that its influence must factor into brands decision from time to time. It is possible to win more than you lose and drive more achievement to your brand with just an essential awareness of the important statistics. According to the MIT Sloan School of Business Research, organizations that use data to make decisions have a 6% higher productivity and output than those than those that don't. As organizations try to incorporate this data more into their decision-making processes, a new method of evaluating data has emerged in response to the current increase in data volume. Decision-making is treated from a quantitative perspective rather than on gut feeling in forms that comprehend the data-driven culture. Now, we all understand that what is data-driven marketing is. It's the practice of optimizing brand message based on customer information. Our data-driven marketing plan begins with an analysis of how consumer behavior has changed over time. <coughs> Sorry. As well as technology that allows you to collect and analyze massive amount of customer data, marketing trend, and industry news. To be more specific, our data-driven marketing plan uses the most up-to-date data analytics prospect to find the most cost-effective media buys while devising innovative approaches to raise product and service awareness. So we can tell that in simple terms, a data-driven marketing strategy is a process of developing a campaign based on actionable facts rather than the guesswork. While this was once uncommon to this majorities of social media, networks and increase a consumer interaction have transformed data management and analysis into a critical CRM procedure for a marketing related company. That's why we came up with the new analytic live webinar, Secret of Data Driven Marketing. Our esteemed speakers are uh, Mr. Shonesh Prokas, CEO of CMO Outsourced. Shonesh worked with B2B SaaS startups and SMS as a virtual CMO with a special focus on content marketing for generating top of the funnel leads. He has more than 15 years of experience across sales and marketing for B2B companies. Over to you, Sonas, if I miss something you can add. Uh, thanks for the lovely introduction, Mega. Uh, am I audible? You are audible. Okay, great, great. All right. So, guys, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, further to Mega's introduction. So, I work as a, you know, outsource CMO of sorts for B2B SaaS startups and SMEs, and uh, I've been kind of oh, I bring overall uh, more than 15 years of experience, uh, you know, in B2B sales and marketing, and uh, uh, more than happy to kind of share, uh, you know, learnings from my journey in those years, you know, in this with, with the larger larger audience today. So, yeah. Um, though Parth is not here right now, I would like to request Aparna to give a short introduction about Parth so that when Parth will join, so, uh, our audience will understand who Parth is and what his, his career and experience was. Sure, thank you Mega. So our next speaker for today is Parth Shivastava, Product Marketing Lead Bureau. So Parth is a data-driven full funnel marketer specializing in product marketing. He has experienced launching and scaling technology and B2B SaaS product. Currently at Bureau, Parth is working on launching and scaling multiple products catering to the risk, identity, and fraud space. Before this, Parth was the first marketer marketing hire 
for community where he built the entire marketing team and scaled the mrr from 0 to 1 do- 1 million dollar via product led growth and owned the whole f- growth funnel before communicate he headed marketing for a us based ai company parallel dots managed and marketed two of their products parallel dots ai apis and karna ai part journey in the startup world started with his own startup company on where he built a travel networking platform company on which aimed to create a vast co travelers network worldwide part has graduated from iit hyderabad uh i hope uh, when path will join uh, everyone can understand what is who is path and what uh, his his experience now my next uh, speaker is stefan rapping who is a b2b expert and consultant now coming to the small introduction about stefan rapin i wish to tell ki he is a marketer and an entrepreneur who started doing marketing 20 years ago he started his marketing career in a winery and had a long experience in different b2b sectors and trade shows he is fractional cmo for many organizations and he helps the companies to build go to market strategies and media leadership with complicated sales cycles link building consulting business uh what to stefan uh, i would like to request you uh, to add something if i miss some point no um i think it's more than enough for more information uh, check my uh, only fans oh sorry tiktok uh, uh i you can find all the information on my linkedin uh so if, if you book up for stefan rapin on linkedin most certainly you'll find me um Cool. Thank you for the lovely intro. Thank you, and welcome, Pat. Welcome to the webinar. I think you are on mute. I was just stuck in something uh, in a bit of, but yeah, finally I'm here. Sorry for being late. I hope okay. I did not disrupt the webinar with much. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, Pana, what do you? yeah uh, parth we just introduced you uh, so i maybe i'll just uh, tell our audience again if uh, if you don't mind i'll just take yeah. you uh, take everyone through parth's profile again so parth shivastav he is a product marketing lead at bureau parth is a data driven full funnel marketer specializing in product marketing he has a experience launching and scaling technology and b2b saas products currently at bureau Parth is working on a launching and scaling multiple products catering to the risk identity and fraud space. Before this, Parth was the first marketing hire for Communicate, where he built the entire marketing team and scaled the MRR from zero to one million dollar via product-led growth, and owned the gro- whole growth funnel. Before Communicate, he headed marketing for a US-based AI company, Parallel Dots, managed and marketed two of their product, Parallel Dots AI APIs and Karna AI. part journey in the startup world started with his own startup company on where he built a travel networking platform company on which aimed to create a vast co travelers network worldwide uh, part has graduated from iit hyderabad so part uh, over to you i will request you to add anything and uh, let us know if anything we missed out here no thank you open i think that was pretty much it uh, looking forward to chat with the people here and of course share any sense which i have on data driven marketing so yeah that's about it thank you part yeah over to you mega oh yeah so i would like to tell our audience that before starting the discussion you can put your all the question in the chat box we can we will be discussing on the questions in our q and a round so we are going to start our discussion round my first question is for all of the panel members So the question is what are the trends driving data driven marketing uh, I would like to request Mr Shonis to start with Yeah hi can you guys hear me Yeah yeah we can hear you Yeah Great. Yes. So I think uh, you know uh, some of the most recent trends uh, which are uh, you know really interesting in driving data driven marketing is the is the fact that we are all living in a you know now I mean post covid uh you know a, a more digital world wherein uh, a lot of people are spending a lot more time on social media platforms on the internet browsing so much content mm-hmm. and stuff so which is like a gold mine for marketers 
uh, and since i come from a b2b marketing background uh, you know uh, um, um, you know uh, uh, my choice of platform is uh, to reach out to uh, prospective clients for my clients has been linkedin and there's an increased uh, consumption of content on linkedin in the last 2 3 years you know post the pandemic yeah. so i think uh, that is one of the uh, key uh, you know things which are driving data driven marketing because a lot more people and customers uh, you know for a lot of b2b companies are spending a lot of time online i mean I, i'll give a perspective from the b2b because mm-hmm. i'm more focused on the b2b side but that's that's relevant for b2c as well because a lot of people are spending more time on social media on in uh, in general on online platforms uh, and also um, a lot of data is being shared online uh, by uh, a lot of people so that also is kind of contributing to uh, you know content in various forms and uh, uh, yeah so broadly uh, uh, these are the few uh, things which i mean i would say that they are one of the biggest uh, uh, you know things which i have seen is that uh, the fact that there's so many people actively contributing to these online platforms is also kind of you know adding to a lot of data and uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, in fact a lot of platforms for that matter linkedin itself uh, evolved a lot in the last 2 3 years uh, yeah. you know as more and more people uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, uh, logged on the platform so there's a lot of content being shared and because of which data points are being aggregated which is what uh, you know uh, marketers also look forward to So yeah, broadly these are the f- these are a few bits towards this, uh, and more more than happy to listen to others as well. Thank you, thank you, Sonesh. Uh, I would like to request Path to give you a point or view in this topic. So yeah, definitely agree with Sonesh on uh, on a few mm-hmm. things which he had just mentioned. Just extending upon that, basically, I think uh, I think people have now started putting customer experience at the center of everything, and uh, that can only be let's say the imperative way to go about it is to collect the data behind the customer journey right from the start to their end to retention everything else as well right so data becomes really really important for an example in a b2b context right you like there like more than what 20 30 50 100 touch points nowadays because before somebody makes sales even in b2c context right that like this discovery this targeting retargeting bunch of other things right so people are always you know trying to explore a lot there's a lot of competition in the market right so there's a lot of options for people to explore as well yes. so the data becomes really really important right uh, mm-hmm. becomes the center point of customer experience so i think basically you know to enhance customer experience all together data driven marketing is super super important and uh, along with that i think it's the day of hyper personalization right nobody wants to be shown random ads out there random campaigns which does not relate to them at all right and again the the thing which is propagating this is data right so you cannot do personalization hyper personalization without using any without using your data without using your data silos and everything else as well right so that's what i think i mean the need for customer experience being the center of everything and also personalization on top of it is is something which is driving these trends as well yeah i think uh, you what you told is a uh, right thing Uh, I would like to request uh, Mr. Stephen also to explain uh, his viewpoint in this. <clears throat> yeah, so I'll uh, I'll challenge you guys a little bit. So the question is, what the hell is data? What is data? Is uh, a customer interview you had is that data? Is um, a testimonial you got from a client is that data? Uh, what is data, right? So. I'm thinking I'm just thinking out out here um just for me data is anything that takes you away from your bias uh, about a certain a certain thing and gives you more points of science like more scientific points that you can you can use facts so you can you can basically base your opinion on some facts and this is super important in marketing because a lot of a lot of in a lot of cases you don't have well, what marketers say oh i don't have enough data to make this assumption or i don't i don't have uh, enough information to to make a decision right or you don't you sometimes hear the results were not statistically significant right and that gives you a, an overview that sometimes you don't get, have enough data and you need to make a decision without having that data so you very often it happens that you don't have enough let's say 
instead of 15 customer interviews that you want to have, you'll have just three. And you need to make a decision, especially that's valid for small and mid mid-sized businesses. You will make a decision based on the small information that you have, right? On the on the you you based you you say these are the factors that um, um, that are influencing my churn rate, and you will not you will have maybe three or four customers, right? Yeah. And this is a. a, a is there any question? Uh, no. Okay. And this is this is what I think about when I think of uh, database marketing. That. Um, in an ideal scenario, of course, you have thousands of customers. If you are Unilever or you are Danone or any other kind of big corporation, you have a lot of entry points, and you can you you have attribution, right? So you know which person came from where, and and then you're like, oh, I have so much data. I know what people consume, what is the trend, and so on. But my world is the, the world that the companies I usually work with they they don't have that much data. So you need to out of three or four uh, cases, use cases, you need to take a decision. And in, in a lot of cases, it is, it is, you know, better, as, as General Patton used to say, a, a good decision today is better than a great decision tomorrow. That's true. So very often you have to take a decision today based on the, the marketing data you have. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. I think whatever you have said, uh, and what question? One question now. I was also looking for: what is exactly data? I have to search for that as well. <laughs> what you open? Huh? Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone, for helping us with the basic question that I think people are misunderstanding in the market right now. So yeah, I think um, all our attendees must be uh, clearing their doubt about the same. So uh, my next question will be, uh, so in today's world, can you explain what are the most important objective of data-driven marketers? Like what should be the objective of that? So uh, Stefan, if you want to start. Really sorry, can you please um, um, start again with the question? I, I there was some discussion. Sure, sure. So I ask, in today's world, can you explain what are the most important objectives of data-driven marketers? <laughs> Good question. Well, okay, it's, I'm going to be a Captain Obvious here. Well, of course, you want leads and revenue, right? That's yeah. what that's what marketing is for. Uh, yeah. Uh, but, but besides that, you know, as marketer, maybe you can think uh, a part in part the case, he is doing, is doing uh, product marketing, right? In that case, you need to think about onboarding, time to value, right? Because you want to deliver value right away to the client. So they stay. Um, and what else? You want to fight churn. If you're in customer success, you certainly want to want to work on, on churn. This acquisition is very expensive, right? You can't get uh, into your, in, in your doors thousands of customers, but if you if you live with millions, then you know that's not a business. It's just a hobby. Uh, so, certainly, um, certainly, I would say that the objectives objectives are different depending on first the stage of the funnel you are in. Is it acquisition, um, acquisition retention, yeah. um, affiliate, or anything else? Then the second part is where your company is at at this point at this moment. Because, for example, companies I work with, if we focus, let's say, on, on generating revenue acquisition let's say for one month then we focus on fight, fighting churn then we focus on increasing customer success fifth month is about affiliate right so you have all these um all these um batches of of of, of tasks and ob ob objectives you want to work it's really important closing notes it's really important to understand where is your company right now um, is your company, does your company have product market fit? Are you post product market fit? Are you, are you scaling? Or as they say um, in the book, um, are you going from zero to one right now? So you are just starting and looking for your first customers. It's really important to understand that. Because if you look for your first, first customers, you know, you got to do a lot of acquisition and you don't care about anything else. If you are, let's say, product market fit, then you are in a way like scaling and at the same time trying to um, to fight your, that's a different stage. So it, 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 it really, it's really 
personalized. Uh, the, the objectives are really personalized based on your unique use case. And I would suggest everyone to not, um, not to receive uh, templates because they will not give you an objective uh, view of the scenario you have. Yeah, very true, Stefan. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your view on the same. Uh, anyone, maybe uh, Sunesh, if you can go ahead and share your view on the point. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, okay. So, um, uh, see, from the point of view, from the question, which basically talks about, uh, you know, uh, what are the most important objectives of data-driven marketers. Uh, am I correct, right? This is the question you asked. Yes. So uh, typically, uh, you know, I think uh, uh, from coming from a B2B standpoint, uh, uh, you know, for me, uh, I look at uh, uh, how, I mean, from for B2B companies, a lot of them uh, leads are the most important, right? And with the, the good thing is now with so many platforms and so many people active on various platforms, we get to understand how we can optimize the quality of leads we get from these platforms. So um, uh, while uh, maybe a few years back, leads itself would have been a KPI, but now uh, clients are increasing ask, uh, increasingly asking, how do I optimize the quality of leads, which I get from the likes of Google or uh, LinkedIn and so on and so forth. And uh, with the increase in data points, uh, you know, across uh, this thing, for example, in LinkedIn, how I, whether the kind of data points are captured through the lead form, that kind of gives me a little more optimization, I mean, uh, helps me in optimizing my lead gen efforts. In Google, uh, you know, uh, the kind of uh, long tail keywords I use for, uh, you know, uh, targeting for leads, that kind of ends mm -hmm. up, uh, you know, helping me in, uh, you know, driving at the right quality of leads. So I'm saying that all these ultimately the, the proliferation of a lot more data on these platforms and, uh, you know, helps you optimize the quality of leads from B2B perspective. I mean, I'm just giving a perspective to it. There is definitely a lot more perspectives you can gather, but this is something from my end. I'm more, more than happy to listen to others as well. Thank you, Shonesh. Uh, I would like to ask Path uh, about the point, uh, what are the important objective of data-driven marketers, what do you think What about this? I think uh, basically the goals for marketing as a whole doesn't change, right? As no. Stefan uh, said as well, right? That every marketing function has different sort of role, every company size, depending upon the market you are in, has different sort of goals, right? So data-driven marketing is, is is not nothing new. It's, it's just reinventing the wheel and Perhaps on, on that top of that, it's basically optimizing what you already have, right? You have, how can you make it better, right? How can you basically enhance uh, your marketing of functions, marketing, KRAs, everything else as well, right? How can you yeah. optimize campaigns, whatever your goal is, right? The, and in the end, date, what data is doing, it's becoming an enabler. So rather than inventing new objectives for data-driven marketing, the objectives for marketing as a whole remains the same. What data does is it enhances, it optimizes, it becomes an enabler for, enabler for perhaps, you know, better ROIs, you know, better lead generation, whatever that may be. What data does is it basically makes your marketing a little bit more better. Yeah, optimizes it and gives you the right insights rather than, takes the guess, the guesswork, the guesswork of the marketing funnels out, right? You don't have to guess anything. You have right there data answering questions for you can be data informed, data driven, whatever that may be. But yeah, objectives don't really change. What data driven marketing does is to enhance, optimize, and enable it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if I'm not uh, wrong, uh, main op main uh, objective is to optimize the marketing. If I'm not wrong, so is that right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Path. Uh, I will go to the next question directly. Uh, so my next question is, what do data-driven marketers struggle with the most? I will start with you again, Parth. I think it's the, it's everything to do with data. Basically, data collection is hard. First of all, you need to identify, uh, this is what my personal experience as well, right? First, you have to identify what kind of data to get into your system, right? You can, you can get everything as they consider, like, what is data? Yeah. Like, what kind, what do you want to term as data? Right. So like 
what n number of sources for everyone out there right so how do you first of all collect the data centralize mm -hmm. it in some particular format and how do you make sense of that data i think nothing goes nothing is more difficult than this and and for not only data driven marketing as a marketing as a whole i think mark ops is a very very you know difficult mm -hmm. function to be in right yeah. so because you need to collect data you need to gather data to synthesize yes. this, you to clean that data and you to present in a human readable format because we marketers of course are tech savvy but we are not technical perhaps what do you want we are not engineers right so to make sense of raw data into mm -hmm. actionable decisions inside that becomes the toughest part in data marketing collection okay. centralization and making some you know decisions out okay thank you path uh, i would like to ask shonish what do you think what are the different struggle of uh, data driven marketers yeah so uh, i'll give an example uh, again this is a very broad question it may not be i mean i'm just giving a perspective to it uh, mm -hmm. from a b2b and from an email marketing so a lot of people and i mean for b2b uh, one of the lowest common denominators for marketing and one of the cheapest ways to marketing is email you know yeah. uh, and 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 uh, for doing a good email campaign what you require is a good database okay and uh, that itself becomes a challenge for a lot of companies uh, you know wherein how do we build a good database of the right contacts uh, and cxos and which is the most updated one and uh, how can we ensure that uh, uh, you know uh, data points are updated as and when you know people move from companies and so on and so forth yeah. so that itself it becomes a challenge if not done properly okay now mm -hmm. there are various platforms which which kind of uh, you know uh, 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 help you do that but uh, again uh, you know this a lot of it is still i guess uh, you know uh, depending on the industry which you are in or this industry which you are targeting a lot of it still requires some manual intervention to clean it and uh, uh, i mean and and an organization should do it well they kind of reap the results uh, accordingly uh, or else i mean uh, you know you you have a lot of databases flying here and there and you don't really get the desired results because the data quality itself is poor and uh, uh, you know these days uh, there's also a lot of intent data platforms which provide you uh, in interesting information about the company from a buyer intent perspective if you can en enrich your existing data with that it will anyways help you and solve your challenges of you know getting even more quality leads so yeah these are two bits from me thank you shonish uh, i would like to request uh, stefan to put your point on <laughs> yeah so um yes as uh, as the part mentioned it, um there is the problem of data collection so data quality and quantity um i've mentioned that you don't always have the the means to collect the the data so much data that you make it I wouldn't say make it meaningful but at least scientifically proven right so you, you can't in the ideal scenario yes of course i have tons of data millions of leads i can make everything uh, every uh, decision based on uh, on uh, on a sci the scientific value, but that's not always the case. In my in my um, personal mm -hmm. experience, the hardest things are is data collection, I think, and data attribution. Uh, data attribution in a way that uh, let's say use Google Analytics, right? Um, most of us are, I believe. So. The problem is that you, you, if you have a site which, which has a lot of traffic, you get so much data, data that you can be overwhelmed. And it might not show you the, the real case scenario. Or let's say you are using, like let's say, Amplitude or, or um, Mixpanel for product analytics, right? Or use, user pilot for figuring out, like, you know, onboarding, what people are clicking on, the cohort analysis. And you, you are like overwhelmed with data because there is so much in there. You have to figure out what to use. You have to find the, the one metric that matters, the one metric that moves your, your funnel toward, that moves your growth. And that's also very hard. Like, believe me, when you have a lot of data, it's, it's hard. And when you don't have enough data, it's hard. So um, you have to attribute, you have to attribute uh, the data to the right channels. And as it ha often happens, um, in a lot of cases, you just you just like you know you, you put your 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 finger in the sky and you're like well sounds like 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 true, and uh, sometimes it works sometimes it's not. There is a there is a famous pun about it. It's like um, mm -hmm. 
uh, it's a marketing plan which says basically like, oh, based on the data, I figure out that 50% our, of our budget is wasted. Uh, the problem is I don't know which 50%. <laughs> Uh, so um, that's my input. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And that is nice word. It is like really, uh, we should think what are the 50 percent was over to open up. Yeah. Uh, thank you all panel member for uh, getting deep dive into the data and definitely uh, we will be learning a lot going forward. So uh, one question I have, so I just wanted to ask everyone, do you think we always have to have a large customer database while doing data driven marketing? And if yes, then let us know how. So uh, Pat, if you want to take this question. Uh, I'd say no, basically, okay. because, you know, not necessarily a lot of, see, you don't need to have a lot of customers, but you need a lot of perhaps, you know, touch points of inputs and everything to make sure that you make sense out of data because data just, you know, two or three or five or 10 or 100 data points do not give an answer to a problem, right? It's okay. a clustering issue, right? Every AI, ML statistics only work when you have a sub, you know, substantial amount of data available. That does not mean it has to be a small company, that a small company can't do data-driven marketing. Basically, the idea is that you can always make sense of you know, data which is coming from different different sources, but right? You have web analytics out there, and how do how how are you gathering these audiences which you're going to target? Right? How do they behave on your website? How do they behave inside your product? What is their buying behavior? Right? That itself is ton of data. Even if you have just hundred odd buyers or like ten or twenty odd customers in a B two B context, and hundred to hundred odd buyers in an e commerce context for that matter. Right? It doesn't matter if your company is small, big, and if your market size is also small, right? Data always has the answers, right? You can always be data informed. The only thing is small set of data might not give you the right answers all the time because statics, statistically speaking, doesn't, math doesn't allow it basically. That's what I'm trying to say. But doesn't matter if you, even if you have 10 customers, but you have different data sources populating the journey, okay. populating the retention, everything else as well. You can always be data driven, always be data for your advantage. Understood, Parth. Uh, Stefan, what is your view on the same? Um, well, I think, yes, the question was, is you need data? Yes, of course. It's better if you have data than if you don't have. Uh, uh, of course, but you know the, you, you never get you, you never get, so you, if you get too much data you can be overwhelmed if you don't get enough you're like mm, I'm feeling like I'm making a gut gut feeling here you know it's more of a gut feeling so you are you are in some way biased towards some uh, um, towards a, a certain solution um, I hope I answered your question I, I don't think I, I, I think part uh, this power is it for us. Sure, sure, Stefan. Uh, so, Nish, if you want to share anything other than what Parth and Stefan uh, expressed. Yeah. So, uh, uh, interestingly, very, very, again, I, I'll just give an example, small example from B2B standpoint. Uh, yeah. uh, which 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 uh, you know directly validates that a lot of data is not necessarily required depending it all depends on your objective so uh, you know uh, i don't know how many of you are familiar with abm account based marketing which is something which a lot of b2b companies are doing these days now account based okay. marketing by the very uh, uh, nature of it is not really not, not necessarily dealing with very large volumes of data it is dealing with small volumes or very focused volumes. So you can start off with, uh, you know, doing an ABM campaign, uh, you know, and which is usually suggested by a lot of platforms as well, that you do a ABM campaign to begin with with only 10, 15 companies and maybe four or five contacts or maybe 10 contacts per company. So uh, it's about using focused intervention and how do we reach to very niche audiences through platforms like LinkedIn or programmatic, uh, this thing is what the focus is. So uh, uh, again, depending on uh, you know the 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 you know the uh, the domain which you are targeting and all, you'll always find niche data sets and which are more relevant for your business, which could be a lot more relevant from a you know from a ROI perspective. And it's all about find, finding that sweet spot and targeting them. Okay. Okay. 
Understood. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sonesh. Over to you, Megha. Yeah, so thank you, uh, Sonesh, Stefan, and Path for that insightful explanation. Uh, now my first, now my second question is to Path actually. So Path, can you explain how P2P marketers can maximize business value from data about customers and prospect? Yeah, very broad question again, uh, but I try to give my sense on it. Uh, basically, in, in a B2B context, first of all, you're dealing with a lot of data because as I said previously with my first answer that there's a lot of customer touch points nowadays, right? People are coming by 20, 30, perhaps mm -hmm. 100, I don't know, more than that, right? Because they do not convert directly. Somebody just tried to discover you, that's one data point, right? Somebody is trying to explore what you're doing, that's another and then somebody tries out your product, that's another, right? So they're like multiple touch points people are coming through. So basically in terms of converting prospects, you need to first of all define what your ideal customer profiles are. Okay. Right? You need to, yeah, of course, understand what your persona looks like and everything. Mm -hmm. And your campaign should be targeted around that. Data facilitates that, right? You know that these are the kind of people you want to go after. These are the kind of content you want to write. Your ads can give insights into what kind of keywords would work as well, right? Okay. So it's all interchanging internally. So you, you can create a data-driven marketing for your prospects as well. But I have personally used data a lot for, you know, perhaps converting these prospects into customer and product market. My most of the job okay. relies around that, right? So in terms of converting these people, right? So you need to understand how the customer journey right? So what we did in my one of my old organization as well, I'm trying to do here as well, that understand 10, 20, 30, 40 of your good customers and understand customers as well, right? Optimize mm -hmm. your customer journey. This is your primary optimized customer journey. That's mm -hmm. how people convert, right? How we do we? Then what data can help you with this? Like if somebody is getting stuck in any part of these customer journey, right? You have that inside, you have that data that what, what kind of cohort is not propagating through the ideal customer journey? Can you do something? Can you run some campaigns, retargeting, in-app marketing, right? Email marketing, whatever that may be, very contextual, very straightforward, right? It can help them convert better. Of course you can. And that what facilitates that is data, right? And then you move down the customer journey, right? How do you bring the predictability of conversion as well? How do you know that people are going to convert? You cannot just sit there and hand over everything to God and say, okay, yeah, it's going to, yeah, I have got leads, they're going to convert into customers. What data can help you is give that insight that where people are getting stuck, how can you enable them more, how can you propagate them from one step to the other one, right? Everything is facilitated by data. So what data does is it helps you, especially in a post sign up or post trial sort of journey, right? That helps you optimize for everything out there to an ideal customer journey, move people down the funnel, down the flyway, whatever you want to call it right and make sure that they convert only thing which can help you good is have a good product analytics engine and have a good marketing analytic marketing automation engine on top of it which propagates everything right so that's how you convert more customers as well that's what i believe that everything every b2b marketing function can be improved with data but most importantly the lead retention part and of course the lead conversion part. This is where most of my focus also is. And I think that's really, really helpful and propagated by data marketing. Uh, thank you, Path, for the explanation. Now, I uh, would like to request Aparna to go ahead with further questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you so much, Path. Uh, so my next question is with Sunesh. Why is data-driven marketing important for marketers? Okay, uh, so I think uh, a lot of it has already been spoken about, so I'll be yeah, very yeah, brief, uh, you know, I think uh, rather mm -hmm. than being redundant again. So, yeah. uh, see, uh, uh, it's, as I said that again, again, uh, for different people, different uh, uh, views and uh, coming from a B2B standpoint, uh, uh, you know, I would talk, talk about it from a, let's say, a ABM perspective, which is a little more newer, okay? So while okay. leads are uh, uh, leads are the holy grail for all uh, you know marketers and uh, more so with B two B marketers, uh, we uh, you know we are looking at uh, how we can optimize leads which can convert into more uh, focused interventions for our clients. So that's where you know uh, uh, you know how uh, you know how I target the right set of people and the more uh, uh, you know which which have larger chances of converting and uh, engaging with me is more is more relevant for me. 
so for that reason my uh, you know data data points would be how i can you know kind of maximize engagement uh, throughout the you can say a customer journey for a key, uh, an x or y amount of uh, customers for me so 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 uh, you know it it it, uh, it it's all about how do i ensure that uh, you know first of all i set my targets right uh, and how do i get the right data points for those targets so like for example if it's if it's 10 companies so how do i get the right uh, you know data points for those 10 companies in terms of their uh, you know cxo profiles and so on. and how can i which platforms do i use to target them in the most effective manner uh, uh, you know how are they uh, you know kind of uh, let's say if i'm able to target them uh, you know are they engaging with me on multiple platforms and and that in that area uh, uh, a metric called lead score makes a lot of difference wherein i can uh, you know even if they are let's say not really um, you know kind of uh, uh, engaging all across but at least i can figure out okay which platforms have they engaged with me and uh, how okay. how frequently have they engaged with me so that's something you know that's a, this, again i'm just giving a perspective that you know how we can you know, use this medium yeah Thank you so much, Sonesh. I think yeah, my doubt been got cleared. Uh, over to you, Megha. Thank you, Sonesh. Now my um, the question is to st for Stefan actually. So Stefan, uh, we I am always wondering how we can leverage data to develop a successful marketing strategy. So if you please let us know key how we can leverage data to develop a successful marketing strategy, then it will be a helpful for me yeah uh, well how can you not do that <laughs> um, question like if you don't if you don't use data to uh, for, to make a marketing strategy what, what what are you using that's the question right yeah um, sometimes you don't get enough data but then you need to make a decision what you have on the on the plate right now um, especially for startups maybe mm -hmm. For companies without product market fit, you should take. If you have one testimonial, then you should you should build your uh, marketing based on one testimonial. If you have one ICP, then you should use uh, the one ideal profile that you can find, and you think that it's gonna work for you. Uh, especially in B two B, one ICP is how you should start um, your journey to product market fit. Um, in terms of, in terms of strategy. Um, um, you you should collect enough data to make a, a, a qualified a qualified decision, and basically then move along with your go-to-market strategy or with your market st marketing strategy. Um, for companies, for for companies that um, let's say are startups or are just beginning, um, I would not suggest to make a marketing strategy for a very long time because a lot of things will change along the way. Uh, and you will have to improvise anyway, you want it or not. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest to make a marketing plan for the next maybe a month or two, and then moving along the way, you'll figure it out if your assumptions were correct or not. Um, yeah, so um, I guess, does that answer your question? I, yes, I think it answered my question. Uh, thank you. So. I would like to go to the, the uh, Q&A session directly because I can see there are many questions in the chat box already we are having. So my first question is for Anshu Chuk. How does data play a role to convert or we need to move towards different geographies targeting? Any of the speaker can pick up this question. Uh, Stefan, please, if you want, what is it, Path? Uh, I'll, I'll try. So let me repeat the question again. So how does geography uh, manifest or how does it influence data, basically, right? Like, it's, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, well, there is such a tool called Google Trends. <laughs> basically, uh, in Google Trends, you can figure out that certain Certain things are more popular in, in some parts, right? And certain things are less popular in certain things. And, and
they, they do a lot of uh, the, the buyer the buying process is, is is quite huge because you have to buy all that stuff for the for the wedding or, or for the event and for example in in Europe here they don't have big weddings the wedding is much smaller so therefore the the um, the suppliers who, who sell stuff for weddings they need to they think in terms of the supply and demand so the supply is much smaller so you need to uh, also kind of adjust to the existing uh, demand um yeah in long yeah long long story short this is uh, the explanation yeah uh Pat, you want to add something uh, no, I, I agree with Stephen that, I mean, it depends on a lot of things, right? That if you move to new geographies, you need to understand, I think, that, you know, the socioeconomic, the geopolitical, even the psychology of the user, right, changes from geography to geography as well, market to market as well. To understand that what kind of things may work, let's say, for an example, which I have experienced is a good, without sales, sort of, you know, PLG strategy works well in US, didn't work too good in S Southeast Asia for me. So that's that's one of the options, right? So you, you know that you need to move to a different mm -hmm. geography, you need to understand the socioeconomics, also psychology, mm -hmm. also how people convert, how people buy as well. And that answer can be given by data. So, so that's how you move to different geographies as well. Uh, Sonish, if you want to add something. Yeah, so I think I just uh, looked at the question. I, I guess I don't know if the question is very clear because Anshu asks, how does data play a role to convert or we need to move towards different geographies targeting? Yes. So to be very frank, the question itself is a little unclear to me, but then uh, uh, from a geographical targeting perspective, I guess I'll just, again, I'll, I'll, I'll speak from a B2B standpoint. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of people will, uh, you know, for a lot of B2B companies, SaaS companies, they want to target US, okay? And they want to run LinkedIn ads for lead gen, you know, on top of the funnel LinkedIn ads. And they have a budget of, let's yeah. say, $2,000. Okay. And they want like tons and tons mm -hmm. of leads. So basically, the good thing mm -hmm. is, at least on LinkedIn, you get a very interesting perspective that this is the bare minimum uh, CPL you can expect. You know, that's how, you know, you can, uh, from a geography perspective. For example, uh, you know, while running campaigns in APAC, I've realized that, you know, I can get an MQL at, uh, you know, uh, when I say an MQL, typically a asset download lead which is downloaded a white paper or so anywhere in the range of 10 to 20 dollars or 30 dollars whereas the same uh, you know uh, if i want to run a campaign in us uk or any other region it could be go 100 200 or whatever i mean depending on the geography and how niche the uh, this thing so it, it the, the difference is anywhere between 10x to 20x depending on the region geography and all and that gives you a very interesting insight to plan your budget if your budget is x and uh, you want to target ux which is which is you know uh, which is requires 10x then it doesn't make sense so I'm just saying that, you know, that give, these days platforms give you that level of detail in which you can figure out which uh, geographies make sense and, you know, what makes sense from the, you know, from broadly my budget perspective. Thank you, Sonish. Thank you, Sonish, for the answer. Now, uh, what do you, Apana? Yeah, sure. So I have one question from my end. So, uh, if you are talking about data-driven marketing, what's the uh, secret weapon to it, if you'll say? What is the secret weapon to data-driven marketing? Uh, I'll, I'll take a wild shot and I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a customer data platform. If you have okay. one centralized place where you can manage everything right from discovery to retention, everything else in between, uh, okay. If you have that engine running mm -hmm. and populating all your marketing campaigns, your lead generation campaign, lead conversion campaigns, and everything else as well, I think that's that's the most important secret weapon one can have. Because breaking down the data, so somebody asked that question in the chat as well. How do you break down the data silos? Right, there are like tons of data points, as you're discussing, right? So there is a centralized place which can store data, clean data, and present to you in a different format, which is consumable. I think that's okay. that's the one thing which you need. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Nish, if you want to add anything, what's your secret weapon, if I'll say? Uh, so, I think uh, for me, um, as I said that, uh, uh, you know, as, as, as uh, Parth also pointed out, ultimately, yeah. it's your source of data. Okay. okay. 
so uh, uh, i mean if i if you know uh, for that matter for example if somebody is asking me how can i get uh, more qualified leads faster and can linkedin get me more qualified leads my answer is no it will give you it it doesn't can you cannot expect a sales qualified lead as compared to a lead from google because google is more intent driven yes, however uh, you know uh, you can definitely reach your ta- right, the right audience so you can create brand awareness amongst your audience and all and the audiences which LinkedIn, google cannot do because google won't have that level of uh, you know won't have the data right so who searching is there is no way google can influence who is searching what okay. right whereas on linkedin uh, you can still reach out to the right people who you want to be i'm 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 talking from a b2b perspective yeah so i cannot influence uh, whether uh, you know cxo of a bank uh, should be searching intelligent automation and banking on google however i can reach out to the same guy on linkedin and show a white paper which talks about intelligent automation make him intrigued about my solution and uh, you know uh, take it from there so that is what uh, you know uh, i would say i mean depending on objective you can you know you know use your secret weapon okay okay stefan if you want to add anything to it you have a lot of data on the we uh, well you have a lot of data the objective them one should be prioritizing what they they should prioritize based on your Strategic goals course, yeah. for the company. You prioritize what kind of data you want to gather and act on. Mm-hmm. You don't have data, then obviously you have to make a, a decision um, desirably fast uh, based on the um, few data points you have. Understood. Yeah. Over Thank to you, Mika. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Stefan, Path, and Shunis. Now I think there is a question directly to the to Shonesh from Anshu Chok. Uh, Shonesh, the question is: You are talking about MQLs, so how can we use data to create SQLs? Yeah. So uh, I have anyways the message. I think Anshu has a lot of questions in general, yes. so I, I have anyways asked her to connect offline as well. Um, uh, so uh, so yeah. So the thing is, uh, uh, you know, typically, uh, you know, for uh, for SQLs, uh, which are uh, I don't know if uh, the the entire audience is familiar with MQLs and SQLs. So I'll just take a minute to edi- you know just give a brief perspective. Marketing qualified MQLs are nothing but marketing qualified leads, and uh, SQLs are sales qualified leads. So marketing qualified leads does don't mean that uh, the person is uh, really looking at buying, uh, you know, your software in a stipulated lead time. He has a budget and everything. uh but sql kind of uh, you know assumes that there is a, a in, in, inherent need and typically it can be band qualified wherein there is a budget there is an authority there is a need and there is a timeline to make a decision okay so now uh, from this perspective uh, uh, you know uh, uh, how do we convert an mql to an sql now uh, from a b2b standpoint you know uh, you have now uh, in in this day and age you have interesting platforms intent based platforms which give you information about the technographic data of a company for example for one one of my clients i wanted to reach out to companies uh, i mean it, it is a solution which has a complementary which is a complementary software to companies which are implement rpa okay now rpa uh, i i i could figure out uh, a platform in which i could get, get a list of companies who have implemented rpa now for me it becomes a low hanging fruit for for them for me to reach out to the, only those companies with this uh, you know message so now that is what ultimately helps you uh, enrich your uh, data and you know uh, uh, move closer to an sql if not uh, this thing so that's that's broadly what i have to say as an example thank you sunesh uh, uh, for path i have a next question for you uh, smriti chawla in chat box asking how marketing handles uncertainty of data oh that's that's a brilliant question uh, there's a lot of uncertainty of data right because you because different platforms capture data in a very different way uh, marketing automation would capture in a very different way as compared to a product analytics engine versus a web analytics engine versus a traffic analytics engine versus your crm as well right so there is like a lot of uncertainty in terms of data out there one thing which generally helps is to make sure that you have rather than flowing from different platforms and integrating each of them with each other right that doesn't work so you have to have a centralized data somewhere hosted in a data lake or 
on a, on a data platform or anything like that, right? So that you know, even if a customer, let's say if, 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 if an entity, I don't want to call it a customer, let's say an entity is coming via touch point one and two months later they did come via a touch point two, could be a social, could be an ad, could be a retargeting, right? So how do you make sure that you capture that intent, right? Capture that value, right, as well, right? So in that perspective, having a centralized data point which propagates, takes the feedback also, of course, but also becomes your single source of truth, helps mm-hmm. a lot. But there'll always, always be uncertainty of data, even if you use a good, you know, data lake, data platform, whatever that may be, right? There'll always be some uncertainty to data, cannot let go of it. And I think even if you solve 50% of your data problem, you you are in good hands and perhaps better than 80, 90% of the companies out there. Mm-hmm. So uncertainty is out there. And sometimes you cannot absolutely solve it, but basically to have a centralized thing, populating and propagating data from one point to your market ops, to your every, everything else as well. You have need to have a good mark ops person as well in your, in your company. And that, that helps brilliantly. If no one in your company is specializing in mark ops, then I think either somebody internally has to take up, you need to hire somebody from outside. But mark ops becomes really, really important. The data becomes crazy much, right? Which is like, even if 50 customer company has a lot of data. So in that perspective, I think uh, uncertainties can be handled if you have a centralized data point and some of the ones which always will be there can always be there. That's, that's not an issue. Shonish, you want to add something on it? I think uh, Bharat has explained it beautifully. I don't really mm-hmm. add, uh, add anything more to add. Okay, so I would like to ask another question. So this question is coming from Soma Min. So uh, she's asking, we can't track customers in social media. How do you bring all data from social media and match with your email data? Uh, Parth or Sonesh, anyone who want to take this question? Uh, can you repeat this if you don't mind? Yeah, sure. So the question is, we can't track customers in social media. How do you bring all data from social media and match with your email data? Okay, so uh, social media, again, I'll just uh, again give an example from a LinkedIn perspective. Uh, you know, LinkedIn, uh, when you are, uh, you know, LinkedIn usually gives an option of downloading contacts. Uh, I don't know, late, off late, they have kind of changed their uh, privacy and security settings. But earlier, they used to uh, give you an option of downloading uh, contacts, uh, you know, connections, who, who, who are your first level connections. And in those connections, you used to get your their email data as well. Okay. So over yeah. there, your email and your LinkedIn profile is, is kind of handled. Okay. Mm-hmm. And even when you are, let's say, if you're having a database of email IDs, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say personal email IDs and a lot of people use personal email IDs on LinkedIn, on Facebook and all. So you can use that data to create custom audiences and, uh, you know, uh, ensure that you, uh, you know, uh, look alike audiences and so on and so forth. So you can, you know, uh, do your marketing ca- campaigns more effectively and targeted. Yeah, uh, absolutely right, Shunesh. Uh, I would like to request Parth to if you want to add anything on it. Uh- I uh, absolutely agree with Sonesh on this, uh, that could be anonymized, could be non-anonymized. If you want to download it and match it with your e- existing email data, you can do that by a bunch of tools out there, right? There are N number of them. And anom- anonymized data is always there, right? You browse something, you get a social media ad next. Thing. So anonymized data coordination is pretty easy and which every ad platform out there does it. Uh, but yeah, big depends on your use case, basically you're trying to solve for real email based data versus an ad based data source or the lookalike audience data database, whatever that may be depends on your use case. Thank you, Path. Uh, so our next question is from Bijay. He is asking post pandemics, employees are working from home. How the ABM work well in tracking the target con- contact effectively? Any of your path stories? Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, so yeah, it, it, we can't really do IP level targeting over there. I mean, if you are looking at, you know, the, so that's where uh, your source data comes into play. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I can't uh, like, uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I say IP level data, let's say uh, prior to the prior to the pandemic, when people were working from offices, you mm-hmm. could, let's say, target, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 in a particular, you know, uh, location and run ads. 
uh, even I mean uh, trying to do ABM through Google to some extent. You know, I'm just giving and giving a perspective. Also, some programmatic uh, platforms used to give you an option that you know only in this area they will run ads and so on and so forth. You know, mm -hmm. in this pin code and so on and so forth. So to to target. So example, let's say if a startup wanted to reach out to uh, you know companies in the valley. Uh, you know, uh, CXOs in the valley, Silicon Valley. So they would just run ads in California and those kind of you know regions over there. So, however, post pandemic, it is very important for them to at least understand your email ID, your number, phone number installed. So, wherein you know you can run anonymized campaigns over there in some way. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, I mean, uh, I'm just thinking out loud over here. This is because this is a challenge we also faced recently, mm -hmm. but we uh, managed to kind of uh, uh, and more so in the US. So, uh, you know, if you want to run such a campaign in India. This will be a challenge, but in US, uh, because of the sheer amount of data available and uh, it being a mature uh, market, ABM is a little more comparatively more mature from a data point perspective as compared to other locations. Thank you, uh, Shunish. Uh, Path, if you want to add something on it. Um, no, basically, I agree. It's the function of availability of data because. If you already have some data, see mm -hmm. how data enrichment works is if, if these two emails are seen together, right? work email and personal email, work email and phone number, personal email and personal phone number, right? If, if these things are seen together on any of the platforms which is under the purview of ABM software or any data enrichment software, right? So you can make that connection, or, of course, anonymized, basically, you cannot have everything out in the open privacy privacy yeah so of course i mean it, it is the function of data enrichment but i agree with uh, sonesh on this absolutely okay okay path over to you Apana. yes so um, my next question will be so uh, with uh, yeah santosh next question is uh, asked by santosh kumar first party or zero party data which is still considered to be most valuable asset? If you ask most valuable, Santosh, uh, it's always first party uh, because it gives a little bit more context than zero party data. Uh, but again, if if when people are moving to zero party data because of privacy, because of all the you know GDPR, CCP, SBC, and everything, all of these components are very very tough. Uh, so. A little bit tough here. Yeah. Actually, very very tough to do everything on the basis of first party data, zero party data alone. Cannot have a lot of information out there in terms of how people are behaving outside the purview of your network. So I think first party valuable. So every every data is valuable asset. Yeah. It's just that first party is a little bit more mature than zero party mm -hmm. data. But since platforms are becoming privacy first, and every even Apple's going headless, everybody is just out there, I mean, you cannot track opens perfectly in iOS 14 and above as well, right? Email opens I'm talking about. So that's one example. So zero body data is becoming the crux of everything, but it does not give the complete picture. In terms of valuable asset for marketers, definitely first party. Valuable data for you is, of course, say zero body. I mean, for everybody out there, privacy is, is, is of prime right. So definitely. Correct. Uh, Sunesh, if you want to add anything. I think uh, it's also depending on, you know, it's a very <laughs> interesting question, but uh, the, the challenge is, uh, do you have the capabilities to actually get zero party data or first party data? Okay. First party is still okay, but zero party data is where, uh, you know, typically you need to be in a way a brand of sorts, right? I mean, uh, the person needs to proactively come and give you his data. Why would any Tom, Dick and Harry want to give you your data? You know, he has to associate with a brand in a way. So, uh, so I think that is something which is essential, which is a very differentiating factor that only probably, you know, maybe it's a little more towards aspirational brands than, uh, than uh, you know, uh, applicable to any and everyone, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, Shuresh. Uh, Path, if you want to share his view on secret of successful data driven market what you think ankit about this uh over to you ankit hey uh thank you so much make miller thank you uh thank you aparna Parth and uh, sonis uh to have it here and uh, yeah to take on this is uh, what i could see having worked with uh, a lot of companies on uh, on our own uh, on our own product within our company working with a lot of marketers 
and a group of marketers within several enterprises. Uh, what we could see, uh, data plays a very critical role and we could see a major fallback that keeps on happening with data is keeping the data intact and updated and uh, not playing around with uh, you know old data sets and inactive data sets. So we could see uh, post pandemics this, there has been huge change and, and the data moment uh, for the contact keeps on happening at very fast pace uh, than it was earlier. So uh, what we have observed is even for uh, starting with the first party data and the contact data with PII informations, uh, people keep on changing a lot of job and then uh, they keep on uh, moving across several organizations over uh, quarter to quarter in last uh, two years. So uh, recently we could see uh, a lot of ETL process keeps on happening. Uh, a lot of uh, ETL process keep uh, are getting organized across the platform by uh, by our enterprise uh, enterprise users. Uh, when uh, when they organize, they connect uh, their uh, data warehouse and then uh, they they go through ETL. So it's it's more aggressive than uh, than early on. So these are uh, these are our our very recent observation uh, coming to the data and the practices. And uh, I hope we we uh, all of the panel members have already addressed a lot of uh, questions uh, right from uh, you know basics to yes. uh, to advanced ones. So if we talk about data driven marketing, yes, it's it's completely data driven uh, driven approach, number to number approach, and it's it's more. Uh, it's more beautiful uh, where uh, where we have we have everything uh, out here at single place. Yep. Uh, so that's all from my end. So part is also about to leave, right? Yeah. Yes. I thank think you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Part. It was nice interacting with you. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for bearing out early, but I have a private commitment. Team, but thank you, Ankit, Meghmala, and Aparna, and everybody else as well who's here. Really great talking to you, and if you have any questions and anything, please be good. Let's get it. Bye. Bye. Bye all. Bye all. Thanks. Bye. 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 Uh, we are now almost uh, to the end of our webinar. Now I would like to tell our audience that, as we all know, the uh, IIT is a unified marketing platform. So if you are interested in a discovery call, uh, then put in the demo here, demo link here. Uh, you can schedule the demo here also. And we also want to thank our sponsors, Niche Marketers and Pitbull also. Niche Marketers is a um, community of credible and expert marketers in India. Uh, you can have a look in the website. Uh, we will be putting it on the chat box and also coming to the Pitbot, a small introduction about the Pitbot. It's a digital transformation customer experience and data driven marketing company. Some of the specialties are for them in design, UX, UI consulting, web design, digital marketing analytics and many more. What do you open now? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. So uh, thank you panel member for this super engaging session. I'm sure everyone must have learned a lot. Now I would like to add here that we are organizing a webinar on weekly basis every Thursday 5 p.m. for this and upcoming month. For next week we have planned on the crucial uh, topic that is disrupt the funnel and scale revenue team with aut marketing automation. So I'm providing the link in chat. Uh, so your registration is open. You can go and register. We also have made a WhatsApp group where we do give update about the webinar topic. If you are interested, you can join the group as well. So I'm putting the link in chat. Okay. So we will put this webinar on our YouTube channel as well. That is Aritik. Do like, share and subscribe to our channel for the recorded version of the webinar.